At first glance, there doesn't seem to be much out of the ordinary here at all. It's shrubs, grass, pleasant fields. You would have never imagined that something earth-shattering happened here in this region. There are chain link fences and barbed wire all around it. Today, people just walk past. But at one stage, this was very high security. These fortifications were put in place to protect a precious resource hidden inside a concrete vault. Tucked away at one end is the most striking part of the site, long dome-like structures covered in grass, possibly as camouflage. Buried within are hidden rooms, built at a time of national panic. This place looks like something out of a science fiction movie. With its heavy doors and the security around it, it really gives the impression of something that's either from the future or heavily technological from our present. I grew up fairly close to here. But I never came here as a child. This was like a massive no-go area. Long ago, this was a place of state secrets and maximum security. But in 1983, that security was breached. At one end of the site is a reinforced building that few people have been permitted to enter. Rebecca Morton has been given access. This is a really exciting room. Gosh, is that something out of a film? Some of the rooms have these strange purpose-built troughs full of like a weird white powder. It's like talcum powder, it's like to absorb something. This place is clearly a rat run. You go through a series of rooms, passing this absorbing powder, and then you get to this room with its big, heavy metal chute. It's becoming quite clear what this is for. This is a decontamination chamber. It was built in the 1980s when the world faced nuclear annihilation. The Cold War was a massive, overhanging grey cloud on our childhood in the 1980s. And it seeped into everything. It seeped into our television programmes. If there is a nuclear attack and you survive the initial effects of an explosion, you will have at least a half hour to get to a public or home fallout shelter. Built at a time of global crisis, this is Greenham Common, a former United States military airfield and key strategic base against the Soviet Union. Any Soviet spy would kill for the secrets kept there, so security was very tight. But on one night in 1983, three unauthorized people snuck onto the base and into the control tower. In 1980, Greenham Common was chosen to host a new iteration of the atom bomb, the cruise missile. But not everyone was happy to see its arrival. The cruise missile program was very, very controversial in Britain. And one group decided that they were going to be the ones to put a stop to it. I remember there being people waving in, sitting you down, and you come and sit with me at the banners, or would you want to come to the fire? Are you warm enough? Rebecca Morden's mother is one of many who answered a call to arms for what was to be a women-only protest. A chain letter spread across the UK. This was a time before the internet, so it still had to go through snail mail. And that letter invited those who read it to come to Greenham Common on December 12, 1982. When the missiles arrived, they were met by a crowd of protesters, some 30,000 strong. These Greenham women, determined to protect their children's future, built camps all around the base. 
So this is one of the gates for the base. The American military added razor wire. They then added dogs and sentries and more police. They've got military police and English squaddies, British squaddies, uh, all protecting the Americans who are living right in the middle of the base. The protests made global headlines, an embarrassment for the British government. They ordered the police to move the protesters by force. There is definitely a feeling that, particularly when a lot of outside of police were brought in, there was a much higher risk of violence to the women. But the group of ordinary women wouldn't be got rid of so easily. One night, three protesters outside the base discovered an open pipe. And they realised quite rightly that it was probably an overflow pipe. So they crawled into it, not knowing where they'd come up, and where they came up was on, actually on the runway or near the runway for the whole base. They make their way over to the control tower for the most heavily guarded nuclear airfield in the country, and they haven't locked the door. They just literally waltzed in and they found state secrets, they found logbooks about what to do in the case of nuclear emergencies, and they wrote their names all over all of it. By the time the women were discovered, they'd been inside the control tower for five hours. This wasn't just embarrassing for the government, it was a humiliation. But the control tower wasn't the biggest breach of security at Greenham Common. The key thing on this airfield is not the control tower or the runways themselves, it's the silo, the big, big structure that actually houses the vehicles with the nuclear warheads on the back. The protesters drew up a plan to storm the nuclear bunkers. The Green and Women waited until it was New Year's Eve and they reckoned that all of the squaddies, most of the base, the military police and that would all be in town celebrating. This was incredibly dangerous. You would have to keep in mind how important this site was and how crucial it was to keep these weapons secure. The soldiers were all armed with assault rifles and their orders were to shoot intruders on site. They managed to put the ladders up, put the carpet over the razor wire, get on to the silos where theoretically the, the nuclear missiles were kept. These women are not there to do malicious harm. All they can do is sing and dance at the soldiers responsible for the security. The dance on the bunkers was broadcast around the world. How much does that get under your skin if you're in charge of guarding the world's biggest nuclear deterrent and you've got a bunch of ragtag or middle-aged women dancing and singing on top of your prized possession? The activists remained outside the base for over a decade. Their watch ended when the final missile was removed and the airfield closed. There's no doubt that the Greenham Common protesters were one of the most iconic images of the 1980s, which was a decade of real conflict in Britain. <laughs>